Welcome back. All right, so yesterday we go through the trade deadline. Everything seems to be fine. The dust has settled, and then it hasn't. Evgeny Dodonov, so a member of the Ducks? Maybe not. So the NHL and the NHLPA are looking into this. I don't know. It seems kind of cut and dried to me. I, I think he's still a Vegas Golden Knight. I think that's what's going to happen. That's my prediction anyways. Because if we take a look at it, it, it does seem like due diligence wasn't done. And you can either blame this on the Ottawa Senators or you can blame this on the Vegas Golden Knights. The one that you can't blame this on is Evgeny Dodonov, who by all counts and measures, he did what he was supposed to do. So with his contract, there's a 10-team no-trade clause. He has to submit that before July 1st each year. So it's 10 teams I'm not going to. My guess is Anaheim's on the list. That's my guess. Uh, that Anaheim was on the list of teams he didn't want to go to. So... It's filed, right? He files it with Ottawa. July 28th, he's traded to Vegas. Now, this is where things get kind of murky. Now, I want to talk about the trade to Vegas, too, because this is part and parcel of what's gone on with the Vegas Golden Knights that drives me crazy. So he's traded for Nick Holden, who's been good for Ottawa. They've kept him. A 2022 third. And this draft added $4.425 million as, as a cap hit to the Vegas Golden Knights. Vegas, since their beginning, they have they have skirted, they have stayed as close as possible to the to the, the cap, and they they will spend spend they they always are right at the cap, and it's been a problem. And then you you pair that with you know Mark Andre Fleury, whether you you believe Fleury's side of it, whether you believe Vegas's side of it, that that divorce that split ended up being pretty ugly to the point where now that Vegas needs a goaltender. The mere idea that Mark Andre Fleury could have been the solution for Vegas when he was there before uh, is met with an immediate response of "No, he's not going back there." No, um, and then you have you know their first year, Vadim Shipachev, and again with Shipachev, it was they 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 had a lot of hype there, and he was going to be this this big player for them, and then he ends up in the minors, and it was just just this thing where they could move him to the minors because he didn't pass through waivers, so it was no big deal. And eventually it turned into, so we're not going to keep him. He can shop himself around. His, him and his agent look for another place to go, and there wasn't any interest, so he ends up back in the KHL. Nikita Gusev comes over. A lot of hype about Gusev. Uh, and and it, it just doesn't pan out. He ends up going somewhere else. Uh, then you look at their draft picks. Nick Suzuki's fantastic for Montreal. Eric Brandstrom's really coming into his own for Ottawa. Peyton Krebs has been fantastic for Buffalo. So... The, the picture that emerges with Vegas is that there there really isn't any patience. There's no patience for their for their prospects. There doesn't seem to be patience with a roster being able to really come together as they did that first year. That first year, you had the whole Misfits thing, and it all worked, and it went really well, and they ended up in the Stanley Cup Final. And since then, they have been in, this, in the conference, conference final. Yes, they've been a semifinalist. Absolutely. There's still that playoff success there. But there's this constant turnover in the lineup. The, the Dodonov trade confused me at the time because he was coming off of a down year in Ottawa. He was being paid probably about $2 million a year more than he should have been. And so Ottawa takes on that entire contract, which also confused me at the time. And so Vegas ends up with this contract. Dodonov's played well. In Dod to Dodonov's credit, he's played well. He's been one of their more reliable goal scorers this year. Also one of their healthier goal scorers. The Pacioretty's been out a lot. Stones missed a bunch of time. Of course, Eichel comes over and he missed the first, what, six weeks after the trade due to the surgery. Six weeks, eight weeks, somewhere around there. And so Vegas is a team that finds themselves up against the cap, having to trade out Dodonov, who has, again, been one of the more reliable forwards they have because of this problem that's self-manufactured. Where, just imagine if they'd kept Nick Suzuki. Just imagine if, if they hadn't traded Branstrom. And again, Branstrom has taken him a while in Ottawa to get there, but he's looking pretty good right now. And it's that patience to get there. Now they have Haig, they have White Cloud, they have other young players in their bottom six, like LeCision, Ron Bjerg, but none of those players are, are, are really thought to be at that same level as a Nick Suzuki or what Krebs is doing. Or hey, Alex Tuck, who ends up being a, a, a one of the guys who gets cast off to try to make room for Eichel. Uh, and he, I mean, he's part of that trade, right? But that's part of the reason why, is because they needed to trade out money. Well, Tuck's been hurt, so they trade him out. 
And again, it's just this recycling of players. So coming back to this situation with the Donov, and I, I just, I view it in, in the picture of everything else that goes on with Vegas. So what did Vegas need at the deadline? They needed a goaltender, right? They needed, or they needed to just firm things up with their goaltending, whether that means bringing in a goaltender, whether that means, I, I, again, I, I'm not sure if that would have meant uh, a trade or something of that nature. You know, they, they couldn't get Flurry. Fine. Dallas picked up Wedgwood. They didn't pay a big price for Wedgwood. I think if they had Wedgwood in that, I, I think Wedgwood and Brassois, while it's not fantastic, it could have been okay. Logan Thompson's been good, though, so maybe Thompson ends up being the answer. But March 21st, yesterday, he appeared to be traded to Anaheim, he being Dodonov. The problem being, Vegas doesn't have the 10-team list. Now, he got traded to Vegas July 28th. I don't think the decision to trade Dodonov came as a big surprise. We have seen all year uh, speculation that, hey, so when Eichel's ready and when they need $10 million in cap space and when they have problems, Riley Smith, who's a pending UFA, and Evgeny Dodonov seem to be the obvious choices as forwards that they could move who have a big enough cap hit combined that it could make room for everybody. So with that in mind, I'm sure this wasn't something Vegas just decided yesterday morning. They didn't just wake up yesterday and go, oh, we need to make this cap space. I'm sure the Dodonov situation was one that they realized they were going to be dealing with at some point. So if you don't have that 10-team no-trade clause, if you don't have the 10-team list in front of you, you call the Ottawa Senators to make sure they've got it and you get them to fax it over or uh, send it by carrier pigeon, however National Hockey League teams do it. You get that paperwork, right? You get that list. They have it. Now, the weird part is that Ottawa would have it still would be odd. But if you don't have it, then you call the agent for Evgeny Dodonov and go, hey, so your client has a 10-team no-trade clause that was to be submitted by July 1st of last year. You know, it's the trade deadline. We're looking to deal your client. Uh, do you have the list? If you do not have the list, can you can you uh, find it and have it submitted to us? We've got somebody else calling the senators. Um, if, if they don't have it, we're hoping you have it. Just something like that, right? Something like something like that and, and make that move happen. Or maybe try to make this trade a couple of days before the deadline, right? So you, you get the groundwork going a couple of days before. Pull Dodonov out of the lineup. Uh, you know, sit him down and say, you know what, we're we're going to make this move. So I, I think there's that due diligence that's important when you're a general manager. I think your your communication with your players is very important as well. So being able to sit a player down who's on a 25 goal pace for you, it just seems to be like the, the, the nice thing to do and say, hey, so we have to make some cap space. And unfortunately... We're, we're going to deal you. So we don't have your 10 team, no trade clause. Like it's just, it just seems to be like really simple thing to do. So there will be some blame thrown at Vegas. And some of that is going to be leftover resentment people may have. I know there's a resentment because the team has never missed the playoffs. The team's never really gone through a losing season. Uh, the team's been in the conference finals numerous times already in their first four years, now to be five. And they're likely to make the playoffs this year. Even with everything else that's gone on, and even with them in a in a, a downbeat right now and, and having a hard time only having won four of their last ten, I still expect Vegas to rally and make the playoffs. I fully expect it. I'll be very surprised if they don't. But this is one of those things that other players might look at and say, yeah. The one thing I've always thought is, like, when, when Nate Schmidt signed his contract with Vegas, it was seen as being a little bit below what he might have got on the market. And then they move him. And so if you sign a guy to a, to a long-term deal and then you move him, it might be harder to get that next guy to sign a long-term deal, especially if you want a discount. If, you're, if they're saying, you know, you're really important to this team, but we, we're looking at our books and we want you signed for a discount, it might be, yeah, I'd love to give them a discount, but I noticed that other guy, he signed a long-term contract and then on the bargain contract, they traded him. So there's that other side to it too, right? Because hockey players pay attention to this kind of stuff. Now, if this trade goes through and is, is held up by the NHL and the NHLPA, it clears $3.375 million in cap space for Vegas. But if it doesn't, the NHLPA says this wasn't done right. Now, what's uh, the other interesting part, too, is what if the NHLPA says they done to Donov dirty 
Try saying that four times fast. So they say they did him dirty. Forget it. He's still a Vegas Golden Knight. And the NHL goes, you know what? Nah, it's fine. He's an Anaheim Duck. Let's just say that they come down on opposite sides. Then what? Does it go to an arbitrator? How long does this go? And then the other part, too, of this is, so right now, if you look at Cap Friendly, Dodonov's with the Ducks. But while this is in dispute, where does that cap hit fall? Does it fall on the Ducks now? Does Vegas save that money right now? How does that affect Vegas's cap situation going forward? And if the NHL comes down and goes, nah, because the caps, you know, it's, it's, it's looked at daily. Do they lose any savings that they've got over the days that it takes to come up with how that like, and I don't know if they're going to decide this today. I would think they just should be able to decide this pretty quickly. It seems pretty cut and dried. Twitter's decided. So if he ends up back in Vegas, how awkward is that? Then they can't bring guys off LTIR. They end up way over the cap. Oddly enough, I think they're better off with Dodonov than they are if they trade him. I think he's a good forward for them. He's a reliable goal scorer. They got shut out last night. And the whole game, I thought, you know who they need right now? Dodonov. Their power play doesn't look very good. Dodonov would work there. So the other part of this too is that if he ends up back with Vegas and they haven't done their their, their due diligence and it's like, nope, nope, you, you guys have to keep him. You tried to trade him somewhere he... He can't be. He has a $5 million cap hit next year too. So he could use that no trade clause. He has to submit the 10 teams, of course, again, before July 1st of this year for the following year. He could he could make life difficult for Vegas. He could, he could make it so that his 10 team no trade clause is 10 teams that they might want to trade with and, and just leave teams in their division and say, you know what? I'm, I'm fine. You're going to trade me. I, I, I'd rather go to a team... And I understand Anaheim's in their division, but I just, how, how does this work? Because I, I think this kind of breaks the relationship with the player, right? So would he, would he want to return to that team? And would he want to, you know, I mean, I'm not saying about the locker room, but does he want, does the management team, does he, does he want to play for that management team? It's one of those things that you just, you look at this on, on just the face of it and it, it ends up making Vegas look bad. And again, whether you are of the mind that, you know, people just kind of pick on Vegas because it's easy to pick on Vegas, or you think there's something there that the way that they, they do things in management in Vegas is, is a little different than the way other teams do it, that's, that's, that's fine. You, you can go ahead and think of this however you want. Um, my honest opinion, I think he's still a Golden Knight. I, I do. If it's revealed, and I, I looked, I heard Puckpedia had the 10-team 10, 10 no-trade list. For Dodonov and I looked and I, I didn't see the actual 10 teams but if if they're on if Anaheim's on his 10 team no trade list he's not a duck because he it's it's on the list of teams he wouldn't be traded to and it doesn't matter if they didn't have that paperwork it's not on Ottawa that he didn't have the paperwork it's it's it absolutely is not I, I really think it is on the Vegas Golden Knights that they didn't get that paperwork they didn't make sure they had that list before they made the trade with Anaheim. So I think he's still a Vegas Golden Knight. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Is Dodonov a duck? Is he a Golden Knight? Where do you put the blame for the situation? And again, how do you think this affects how other players see Vegas? Do you think it affects them at all? How do you think this affects the way other GMs might approach trades with Vegas? Like the next time you're you're you know dealing with Vegas, if you're looking at this guy you're acquiring and going, oh, he has a no trade clock. Did you, did you talk to him about the no trade? It says here he's got a 15-team no trade. Did you talk to him about that? Do you call the player and say, hey, so I'm trying to acquire you? Like, you can't do that. That's that's campering. So, again, you know, does this mean that other teams have to do more due diligence dealing with Vegas? Uh, interesting situation. I, I can't remember this happening before. I, I really can't. Normally, just trades happen or they don't. Sometimes guys get mad about the trades, like, flurry going to chicago he wasn't happy about that begin in the beginning but it, it's still the trade is done and it's finalized in this case maybe let me know your thoughts hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video thank you guys so much for watching for all your support i will talk to you again soon